Um, I will call this meeting to order. This is a meeting of the Board of Education and Public for the purpose of conducting the school district's business and not to be considered a public community meeting. There is time for public participation during the meeting as indicated in the agenda. Upon request, the superintendent uh, to the superintendent, the district shall make reasonable accommodation for a person with disabilities to be able to participate in the meeting. Hopefully, you did a roll call. Sir. <clears throat> Elaborate. Which is board recognition month. Um, but we recognize all the time. So, um, as always, um, we typically like to thank the board by donating a book to the library in each school. Um, so, each book is here. We try to purchase them from a local bookstore. So, I believe these were purchased from a store in Sydney. Um, and then they have a little placard inside. So, it will always be memorialized that these were dedicated to the Board of Education awesome. on behalf of the DEA. I'll pass it out to see if you look at that. Then they will be
quick while we're looking at the new image titles for our media center. Um, I will move on to uh, our first opportunity for uh, public participation. During public comment, each speaker is allotted a maximum of five minutes for a total of 30 minutes unless otherwise notified. Each speaker will be asked to announce his, her, their name, and district of residence and indicate if he, she, they represent any organization or any agency. No person may speak more than once on the same subject during a single meeting. Those wishing to receive a personal response from the board or superintendent must complete a public comment form available at the meeting entrance or on our website. In addition, as presiding officer, I would like to remind everyone that public comments should pertain to Dexter Community School District matters and concerns related to the operation of schools or matters within the authority of the board. Those who wish to speak shall direct all comments to the board and not to staff or other participants. Also, speakers addressing the board shall take into consideration rules to come and courtesy. Speakers who make attacks for, of a personal nature and or do not abide by the rule of common courtesy will be reminded that such rules, of such rules by the board president or presiding officer. Such individuals may be asked to leave the meeting if their behavior is disruptive or interferes with the orderly progress of the meeting. Also, please understand that board members do not respond to the public. To public comments, but we will listen very carefully and we will follow up as appropriate. If there's an immediate need for clarification, we will do so after the speaker's allotted time. Is there anyone who would like to uh, participate in the public comment? Uh, okay, we will move on to administrative and board updates, starting with the superintendent. A few quick items. A few quick items. Um, a few quick items. All right, a few quick items. Um, we have uh, Sharon Raschke here. I'd like to sh thank Sharon for our bond series two sales from last week. Um, it was a different experience than the past, but she still navigated it with tremendous poise and saved the taxpayers as much money as we can, but still was able to sell the bonds. Um, you want to? Do like one minute explain. Sure. Hi. Um, yes, yeah, so we had a bond sale that happened to be the day of the pending weather happening. Um, we did do it live here. We had um, some of the directors came and some staff from our building participated. Um, we didn't have um, many orders during the normal order period, which was very unusual. Um, but the volatility in the market currently in a rising interest rate environment, um, really investors, they can wait till tomorrow or till next week, they potentially could earn a little bit more interest. Um, so during the order period, we um, didn't sell all the bonds, but we do have did have a negotiated sale is what we ended up going with. Um, so Stiefel did negotiate with um, some of their firms who were interested, but were interested in a little bit higher interest rate. Um, so we did bump the interest rate up a little bit higher than what we went into the market with and did sell all the bonds. So everything is sold. We will um, be closing on March 23rd. We'll have access to the cash. Um, and then we'll be able to turn around and invest it based on the cash draw schedule that um, Ranger has provided us combined with our own. Um, save uh, our own expenditures that we'll have on our own um, that we'll be able to make a little bit extra money on interest because the interest rate's higher, obviously, ta taxable interest than the tax exempt that we sold. So um, anyway, it was um, a lot of work. Uh, the, the partner firms were Stiefel Nicholas and um, um, Baker Tilly. Uh, Baker Tilly is our financial advisor. Stiefel is the underwriter. Um, they did, uh, we spent a lot of time putting together um, materials. We were going to do this live at the high school um, with the uh, AP Econ students. Um, and because we didn't have school that day, um, we kind of gave our tiny little staff here um, the presentation, um, but they were able to kind of um, see it. It was interesting because the last time we did it um, in 2021, when we refunded the school bond loan fund, um, we did it live with my office. My office came in and we have like six times subscribed on them, all the, the different 
bonds and everything. So it was like orders start coming in and we're watching the whole, it was called game day. And we watched the orders coming in and like it opened in this time we're watching and there's like nothing. It was like, I don't know, half hour before even a first order came in. Um, this time the orders were um, almost all, I think actually all like private um, investment firms. So like Huntington Bank, where they have um, clients who want to buy tax exempt bonds. Those were the kinds of firms who purchased our bonds this time or last time and generally the time before even. They were mostly like mutual fund companies where they may have bond funds, tax exempt bond funds. And so it was just a really different time in the market. So I think the best we could. Yeah, sure, did an incredible job. We were really excited to have the kids involved. And then yeah. the ice. Do we still, do we still carry the same rate? Yes, we did. We did get our rate. It didn't seem to help us that day. But what was the average rate? I'm sorry. What was the average rate? Uh, I, I I don't have the final closing papers, but it was just under three percent, like two point nine four or something average over. We only had three maturities: twenty six, twenty seven, and twenty eight. Um, and so it was a little under three percent. But I mean, we're investing over four percent right now. Um, so anyway. Our debt structure still looks really good. So just not as good as I would have liked it. I'm sorry. We're clean on the arbitrage. Uh, we're clean on the old arbitrage. The the new bonds will have their own arbitrage, but um, you know, certainly, yeah, our arbitrage rate is like just like 2.94 or something like that. But when you start blending investments with you need some short-term cash as you need to, you're not gonna we won't earn over four, but we'll be able to earn. Probably our arbitrage on this, which is good because then we can spend up to the maximum allowed or allowed to spend. Any questions? All right, and then we're going to spend some of that bond money. Uh, Craig's here. We have a roof problem. Yeah, sharing is spending money on the guy who spends the money. <laughs> Well, yeah, so about a week and a half ago when the storms came through, uh, we actually had, as we're doing a roof evaluation for the entire district, um, the teachers at Mill Creek on the second floor were like, something's making a lot of noise. It sounds like there's elephants up top. So the gentleman who was here doing our roof inspections ran out, and sure enough, the, the asphalt from the top of it, the, the coating on the roof had pulled up. So it literally was like you were taking a bed sheet. And it was there so it's broken loose so we need to have that repaired right away um we had a company come out um jumped on the roof right away put the seal kind of got in place fixed all the major parts of it right there to kind of seal it up as much as we could but we are currently doing a, a going through an emergency bond purchase to get a new roof on the top of mill Creek. so oh, insurance. Hmm? Oh, insurance we have well sharon we've been working with the insurance to go through that to look at the roof. So we're working with our insurance company as well what the, what the is like to have Part of that kind of process. We're not sure right now. So we are, uh, Granger jumped on it right away to work with us um, to get in. We have the bids. Uh, they're due this Friday. Is there any reason we're not covered? Um, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. So, so they, will, they will cover the, um, the repair, but because we were in the process of wanting to redo that whole roof anyway as part of our roof um, um, renovations that we were doing. We wanted to do a much broader project on it. So they will cover a, a small portion of it based on the, um, the damage that was actually caused by the weather itself and not to remove the whole building. I understand how they were building. I guess if we had not had a bond in the process, well, is there a difference in what we got covered? Yeah. Well, well, no, 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 no. There wouldn't be a difference in what we would have had covered. We would not have been redoing the whole roof like we are going to do. So we're not going to be spending any more money than we plan on. Uh, uh, yeah. Right. Correct. So we're gonna we're gonna regroup it anyway. We're gonna spend less than we were going to spend because we're they're gonna cover a portion of it, but they're not covering the whole roof. However, there's it rained a lot today, so it, it rained high enough that a lot of the spots they pulled like the roof drain, the parts that were in like pulled them apart, offset them. So there are spots that our BNG guys went back in, rerouted them as best they could to get ready. So that's why the turnaround is fast. We've had a couple of 
So it, it, it's managing right now. The guys are making it. Um, we did find, I think, as it warmed up, there was lots of leaks, really leaks around. We to take care of that. Yeah, a little bit of water to the um, thank you, Craig, for getting <laughs> <laughs> So, I'll um, explain. Quick update we are part of a large suit against Jewel, the um, main company. There is a settlement. I can't talk about the details yet, but it's going to be coming to the board soon to approve whether we want to agree with the settlement or go separate and into a lawsuit with Jewel. So, um, I've seen the settlement information. I recommend we follow it. Um, but it's coming, so just to give you a heads up. And it is structured in a way I think to be able to kind of navigate so it should, it, it is structured in a way to avoid a bankruptcy issue in theory. But it's, uh, yeah, so it is, I have to, we cannot say anything to me. <laughs> so, um, we only had a uh, school last Tuesday and K-8 on Friday, so not a whole lot went on last week in the schools. It was a long week though. Um, next week we have the science of reading um, on Tuesday. So hopefully you can make that. That's at six o'clock. We'll get out another uh, reminder to parents, for those that might want to attend. And then we have um, meeting number two on the, uh, what is the purpose of school? What is school for? I forget what. So, I had a written. Um, so that's coming next Thursday. So we got a long week next uh, next week. Um, but things are we're in school today. We made it through all day. Well, five days this week. Five times in a row, you got to get up, get dressed, come in, and go to school. How excited they are! Yeah, I know. <laughs> Oh, yeah, like, cute. Why can't going to school this week. Stop, Jason. Go dress. Where are we going to school? We're okay. We got the high school. Can't have any more. So, uh, feel or makeup. Um, we have those. Um, <laughs> okay, um, so the um, board president update, um, I don't have an update, but I wanted to make a statement. Um, so today I want to make sure that we acknowledge that once again, students have lost their lives and were critically injured due to a mass shooting while at school. And it's important to recognize that this is the second time this has happened in Michigan in less than two years. As many people know, I'm a proud, uh, proud Michigan State University graduate. So when I heard the news that shots were fired, it was my experience of shock, not just as an alumni, but because my niece and my cousin are currently attending school there. This connection with tragedy goes beyond close to family members. I also have friends who have kids there, and not to mention the countless Dexter High School of alumni who are now MSU students. In the last two weeks, there's hardly been a conversation that I've had that didn't include a post Dexter connection to the violence that happened at MSU on February 13th. So I think we should take a moment to honor those who lost their lives nearly two weeks ago, just like we did the students who were killed at Oxford High School on November 30th, 2021. It pains me that I don't have all the answers on how to stop gun violence happening on school campuses and educational settings. However, I do believe that a step in the right direction is to elect legislators who want to reach across the aisle and actually make laws to ensure gun responsibility and safety and stay away from electing those who want to just leave it to educators to hardly and train students to think that guns are not scary. In Dexter, we need to continue to be diligent in keeping our students safe. And that mean, in the meantime, please join me in a moment of silence for Ariel Anderson, Brandon, Brian Fraser, and Alexander Turner.
Yeah, I mean, there's not too much. No. So, uh, now uh, school happening, so not too many updates. But last week, despite having the ice storm, the Wiley Steam Night is still happening, and that was a success. I know that we sent a lot of uh, band students from high school. That was a success. The students were allowed to go and do some Lego figures to like, show them, like, made their own uh, marching formations. They were allowed to take photos of the instruments on the bed. All the field. So it was a real nice event for that. I know that uh, in the past, that's like a big reason getting students to join bands, but once you got all that, they're like, oh, I either saw someone in a parade or I went to the, one of the Wiley nights and I had played a trumpet and I was like, the next 10 years. So I think that's a really great thing that we had the ice storm, we had all these problems, we still got to hold that. We still went to really important event for a lot of these kids. That's the biggest one. Boys basketball team, Chelsea. That's great. So it's more of a No worries. I do I have a spot. I will add that the men swimming diet had their SECs eat. Um, over the weekend through various shifting. See anybody with a buzz about the Yes. Um, thank you guys. Yes. Um, we there's only one consent item on this evening's agenda, and that is the budget report. I move that the Board of Education receive the January 2023 budget report. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? No discussion. Um, all those in favor to receive the January 2023 budget report say aye. 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 That would not like to receive the budget report say nay. Okay. Um, we'll move on to our action items. We have three, uh, starting off with the coaching set coaching salaries. Um, our packet includes an executive summary regarding a proposal to increase DHS athletic coaching salaries, as well as a spreadsheet showing the proposed salary structure. This item was previously discussed at the February 6, 2023 meeting and is presented for action this evening. I'll move that the board approve the attached salary schedule for the DHS athletic coaches. Board. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Uh, we presented this at the last meeting and the estimated increase in cost that we exceeded the number of thousand dollars or hours. Um, the structure is built to both it, it's built to align as closely as possible with the other teams in play and to be able to provide experience credit for not only head coaches but also assistant coaches so that we can keep the best coaches. We have some incredible people like to keep close. Um, and have them pay competitively with the coach they're coaching against. My understanding is that a large part of this is already in the traditions, much more than the traditions. And it was up because the next person is so well off of it. But it's up when we move to electronic ticketing, which does the thing in multiple ways, more season passes, but also uh, people will buy tickets. Um, and there's more accuracy to make it in the ticket. It does clean up lots of processes. Um, the proposal would be up to another hundred thousand to get additional estimates for the seven day which just in case it's just people come and go every once in a while. And when you're looking at coaches and assistants, I mean there is there's a lot of people. So a thousand here, a thousand there doesn't matter how it's not biased. I guess I'll just comment and say that we, I know we had a chance to talk to the athletic director at the last board meeting and ask questions, answer questions, and I know we've all had access to Dr. Tinnis, and I appreciate the extra time and information that has been provided. Thanks for looking at it, considering it perfect. It's, uh, 
athletics, and robotics, and band, orchestra, and choir, and drama, all of all of the things that we do outside of school are have a huge impact. Um, and our coaches spend they spend more time with our kids than some of the parents are going to spend with kids. And those of you that have come and either have had high school kids or have high school kids, they're gone a lot. They're at practice a lot. So our coaches have had a huge impact on their life. Um, I know that you answered this question. In an email, but I just thought that maybe it would be important to speak to the different percentages um, and, and why that is, just so that um, if someone is looking at the packet later and they, they have that question, I think it's important to have why there are different percentages. So, most or all districts, when you look at their coaching salaries, they have tiers in terms of the amount of pay based on the needs of the sport and both in season and out of season. And the dynamics of the sport. So, some of the sports are 12 and 13 percent. That is because they are uh, large staffs. They generally have a significant amount of revenue that comes in to help offset, but they have, if you look like football and track, there's a million people going on track team, and there's a million people going on to the football game, and then they're running all the way from seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, KB. I mean, it's a big program along the offseason for. And it's specialization. So they're not only managing a team as a head coach, but they're managing a bunch of adults. So throwing shot put is a specialized skill. Sprint coach doesn't coach shot put. Um, so you're working with other, and then meanwhile, you have uh, pole ball, really specialized, different skill, and different way of coaching than what you would do with hurdles. It's very different. Then you have sports. In a lot of the sports, if you look at their off-season, the MHSAA gives some sports 15 dates to work with in the off-season with the full team, plus what they do with smaller numbers. So many of these sports work almost year round. And then there are the complexities of the sports. So some of them, you have a significant amount of scouting, game planning, in-game decisions. You have, I mean, I look at rest, wrestling and Cooling for the athletes, it's cooling for the coaches. They're looking at every meet who they're wrestling against. If they're strategically avoiding certain matches, what different moves they have to teach a kid in a couple of days to be able to beat the kid he's got to play. They got to do it every week. Um, you look at um, some other sports. I mean, I always dream, I'm not a golfer, but when I did golf, being a golf coach, that's a great thing. <laughs> There really is yeah, a lot of it's during the day. The kids are spread out, so the management's different. But it, it's just the, the nature of the sports. So the percentages reflect some of the intensity of the sports. Like swimming, swimming is really intense. It is six a.m. and after school and all day. It's intense. Um, you have a lot of sports that you have to do strength coaching, strength training or um, agility training in the off season, or you're never going to win a game. There are sports that play 30 games in the summer, not part of their season. They play the entire season in the summer. It is. So the percentages reflect the needs and the dynamics of the sport. It's, it, it's always hard to look at without knowing every sport. And granted, there are coaches in some sports that are at the 8% or the 10% that put in a ton of time. They all do. And there's coaches at the 12 that put in a ton of time, but maybe don't do as much as the other ones that are at the 12. So at the end of it, it's about a structure based on the nature of sports. I have a question. I should ask this. I have to say that. With the growth of the uh, Two weeks a year, that's as much. At some point, we're going to figure out what we do first. I know he does the clock. Right. He does it with all the sports. He does it right now. He's so football. No, he actually gets paid. We pay our strength coach um, $3,000 a season plus summer. So, $14,000. We consider it a little more. But he runs that from 
six thirty to eight in the morning and three to five every day. On uh, holidays, they come in, and it's absolutely it's it's kind of fun. Um, we're trying to find an assistant strength coach that can help out and kind of alleviate some of that. We have a lot of kids. No, it's a great problem. Um, we hope we set out we'll for someone to do it. I think we have one increase so far. We're hoping someone wants to learn the program. The real challenge in our program is that fact is we don't want to change the kind of good system. So you want to get somebody that knows what they're doing that's willing to do it this way. So it's um yeah, which which and then the um power of the team is like 130 kids. So at some point within a nine o'clock, we'll have to figure out. You consider any that would be someone has kids. But that's not relevant as the coach is salary because it's not his strip club, right? Okay. Yeah. Right. It's, it's, we asked right now if we can find someone we're going to train in real time. They're going to do the workouts. Yeah, because it's got the good way of doing everything. So. <laughs> it's been effective. Yeah. Time. We don't get 
We know they can still take the time on your FMLA to get the paid days. And even if they've elected to take, I don't know, do any teachers now only get paid from September through June? Or is everybody on a call though? There is a handful that are excluded, right? That, that's just the yeah. bookkeeping. Yeah, that's, that's, that's still they, the. They, uh, they get the pick how they want to get paid. It's the same pay regardless. Yeah. 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 Yeah
well positioned to continue with a strong adaptive and caring environment and education for our students and I, I know that the Board of Education through the summary that was described by Trustee Vegas um, and the um, superintendent director of the um, 2022 evaluation. So it's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Okay. Um, hopefully, you will all vote. Hi. Ms. Greater, I Yes. Ms. Angus? Hi. Ms. Jolie? Ms. Guerra? Hi. Ms. Relabore? Hi. Mr. Earl? Hi. Thank you all. It's only possible to be great. We have a great administration, we have a great order, and teachers, bus drivers. <laughs> 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 And a business office. <laughs> <laughs> I, I share the business. <laughs> <laughs> we'll move on to the next item on our agenda, which is discussion items authorizes authorized submission of the RF, RFP for solar solar project. Griffin, can you push the green button to say south and east? <laughs> So, um, <laughs> so you see, you push it, um, there's this button to the pocket. I gotta show you how to do this one day. You gotta turn it on the apple. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. <laughs> So uh, we've been working on a solar project for quite a while, and um, Sharon, Craig, and I have been knee deep in the solar world. Uh, we are really close to. We kind of navigated what used to be the only option was to do a lease agreement with a current solar vendor, and they could get because they would have been a private company or had private investors, they could get the actual tax reduction. When the IRA passed, which was the Inflation Recovery Act, they included a method for school districts and municipalities to be able to get that same rebate. So we've been going down this road. We're now at a point we, we're ready to go forward. We've done some private, quiet, quiet fundraising. Uh, we have 175,000 committed eggs, either like more like 1765 or so. Um, like the public to be able to continue to raise, but we need to do an RFP because we'd like to have the option of either and have apples to apples with carrot. Do we lease or do we just pay it and fill it? So we want to do both, we look at both options. Um, so it's been nicknamed as the design of a way to a sustainable future. So um, the proposal, so today it's really just asked. If, to consider it then next week, hopefully vote to decide if we can go forward with the RFP. Craig's working on it. He's learning a lot. And it's a great process. Um, so the location, if you look at our campus, we have the bus hub. We like the covered area there. It's in the last bond. We plan to cover part of it already. Uh, we have not done that only yet. We have multiple days a year where buses are out there, the sky is open up. It'd be nice to have a little covered area to work with. Um, and then we have that, I circled it. We have the, what used to be Mount Cornerstone. When we built Beacon, it was that giant, we, all, we actually, we really did talk about Beacon and Sled Hill, but we couldn't figure out the same place. You know? So it's not a level off, and it's really, there's no utilities there right now. It's not big enough build a building per se. Um, so we're looking at ground milk on that area. And then the utility panel that is located right behind Wiley. That panel runs Wiley, Mill Creek, Anchor, and Beacon. 
So they would tie into that. They're all on the same circuit. So solar would produce energy for those four buildings. Um, and we need to replace that panel already. So we're trying to coordinate it at the same time. So this is a concept of what that covered walkway would look like. It is elevated panels, nice firm structure with a, something decorative to hold it. Um, elevated high enough, you can see it's above a basketball. Elevated high enough, we can get our trucks under it to clean, clean snow, et cetera. So what it would do is the, the solar panel walkway would provide shade coverage for students with weather. And it would also get us energy savings and educational opportunities. So we started this, it was during the pandemic, I met with the Green Schools Club. And they got talking, and we all we got talking, and we were looking at, you know, if we were going to do solar, that's the place to do it. It would be multi purpose. Um, for this scale, it's a long term investment. As we run the numbers, the payoff is about 12 years, 12 to 13. So it's when a kindergarten character starts, when that kid graduates, we would actually be in the positive. Most of the panels are built in 1925. So it would be in a good position. The kids would see it every day, which helps when you're doing place based educational work. They will see it every day. So then we'll have access when we do this, we'll have access to the data and new technologies, et cetera. There's currently about 7,300 K-12 schools using solar power nationwide. So it's about 5.5% of K-12 schools. Uh, since 2014, it's been about 139% increase in the amount of solar installed in the school. There are about 5.3 million students that attend the school with solar power. And uh, solar power districts save significantly on energy costs per time. There's, granted, Arizona, Pretty good place for solar Michigan. It's a little different when we still get some savings. So we had these are graduates from last year at Green Schools Club. And some of their quotes as we work, we do have a bunch of we've gone through and submitted a grant um, that had a bunch of work on teachers across the district on what projects they can see themselves doing, what standards they can teach using the solar businesses. If it was sitting in the backyard. So we have some great quotes from some uh, students, and they were just really working with the Green Schools Club to shape this concept. So our teachers, we talk by Ms. LaMarche, um, always good for a great quote. So uh, she she is the, she's the advisor for Green Schools, she was, and she's still, yeah, okay. How many of you were in the Green School? Uh, technically, they handed it off to you. <laughs> I mean, they kind of like wrapped it all up in the ESL, doing the battery, uh, battery stuff. Yeah. They don't have to get projects. We gotta get this one done. Yeah, that, well, that one they kind of like they got all the planning on it. Like they so much that the student had all the real parts. Um, well, that's well, what we're talking about. If you want to phone it, that you gotta ask your way to do the phone. All set. Not great. So by the numbers, when we look location in a perfect world, we would be able to do across the entire bus hub, all those little red circles. Yes, I mean, yeah, that's really expensive. So realistically, if we can do what's in this picture up top, a large space near that sidewalk, maybe on both sides of the sidewalk, and then a lot of ground mounts, ground mounts significantly cheaper. When we look at that long space, that's about, 125 feet right there. You just look at that little area. So we did both sides, we get a couple of hundred feet of uh, real solar cover, which is a lot of coverage for us. Um, so the location, we put a combination of walkway and ground level. The estimate for generation, this is a low estimate. This is without putting anything back into the grid. We've actually been trying to look at it. We do the good, we'll have the numbers run so we can bring in as much energy as possible, that we can have the right equipment. The sale back to the grid doesn't save us a lot of money. It really doesn't get you much back, but we want to maximize the grid session, how much we do. So we do have a widely tools to do that circuit with AC for all those buildings. So we use power all year. The 726, it's really about an 800 to 850 number, is where it's like the sweet spot that in any 15 minute interval, we're never going over. Use most of it, even in this 
times that we're not in session. So we do have to navigate over holiday breaks and areas like that. So you can play around with numbers. We would say somewhere between 60 and 70 thousand dollars a year just to take electricity from. So learning opportunities, oh, it just says Denver. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, learning opportunities like this is never is outlined here that they've done solar cell, solar cell projects for many years in their science class. It'd be great to be able to do it right back there, sort of action. They've done all the analysis. I know there was one project, they were in our boiler room. They, they, they've done analysis of our data over and over, but they have it in real time calculations with our actual power usage. That's, we do a lot of place based work. We think of the bridge project and we did science of sledding. We've done all kinds of cool place based projects to have a giant solar array sitting in the United schools with the data accessible. It really is great for our kids. Um, so we've done a silent fundraising phase. We have 175,000. We have about 126 something in party. Said we have to check the rest. Um, we'd like to do a public phase to get up to about a quarter million, which is enough to cover to be able to cover the whole post the walkway and then we'll set up offset there because that is more expensive. Um, and 100% of the donations are for the investment to be able to put install this. Um, one of the models we saw is to maintain vegetation. And we do a service contract. One of the companies we've talked to about their service contract, they bring in sheep. I mean, there, there's some, but think how cool that would be with our kids to be able to do a project. So they don't bring goats because the goats will jump on the panels. That's Not what they told us. Yeah. They told us on the ground mount, they don't like the goats. Oh, yeah. They jump on the panels. They would. They would. <laughs> the only time I remember that sentence, you use that, that goats are like, uh, so um so the request is to be able to approve that we can perform with an RFP. This is the part where we start publicly talking about the project that obviously the first like month. Um and we go and submit an RFP, we get our bids. There's been some statewide bids, so we have a link benchmark for pricing. We've done the quotes already for a lease agreement, so we have project benchmark against. And then once we get the Get the uh, bids in. We can logically sit down and decide. Okay, if you want to pay cash, we want to do something. But you can't do it until you put forward the bid. Kind of alternatives we can get in closer. That's a great question. We want to be able to leave options for bidders to be able to come up. Like we want to be able to say basically what we want to install, and then see creatively what they come up. With. It's almost like a design build. Do what you want to have. If we can raise more money and get more value for add ons, we ought to have that figured out. We're going to not personally. We want to make it the whole concept. We want to do a design that where they can, experts that install solar, what we're trying to achieve, and they can come up with a, a basic, basic amount that they're going to produce. And then they can take into account whatever the design that they think is best for us to get to that goal. As long as there's value in the district, I don't want to let the fundraising people watch. True, true. But I think we can make capture people's imaginations to it. And I think you might maybe do some other nice big donations to do so much more than that. I would hate to have people think that they don't need the money or don't help us. Well, I had the 250,000 original goal wasn't enough to do the whole thing. Probably going to be about the million dollars. If not, like the lease agreements, both in the million three range, but that's the service of the units. Uh, so we'll know once we get out of the market and get up to put a bid out exactly what it would cost if we put it in and got the tax savings. You talked about a 12 year payback, but I assume that your savings from the beginning. Get big savings, but you get over the hump there for the rest of the lifetime of the payments. Yeah, at about year 12 or 13, you start to really save that full 60 to 70,000. But you're saving some of it. Yeah, it's working up to that point. It's closing, so yeah. Is it going to be tied to the grid? 
Uh, yes. Craig, yeah, yeah. Plan. Craig has had four meetings about that panel and learned a lot about the different units you put in. So if you want to be able to send back the grid, you have one type of unit. And then we had how do you throttle it down? So we've looked and it sounds like it's actually cheaper for us to install the unit that sends it back. Right. So I do it always later. Stop. So yeah. if we get in touch. She said that you don't. Unless you have battery power, you don't generate when there's when there's a uh, power outage. So if, I, so I'm just I'm wondering whether this uh, are people with the battery backup. We should do an alternate for battery backup so we can consider it. I know the doc technology is is better there. We want to build do the RP in a way that they can work as the technology because the battery technology is so close. It's okay right now, but it's so close. They really it was better really good over the last five days when I have the power. I, 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 I assume really that you can add a lot of back to the future also. Some of it has to be considered, it's cheaper to consider the initial time. But well, you want to have a special piece of power. Yeah. So yeah, should be able to add them on later. Uh, if you're trying to generate power to really make it worthwhile. Yeah, it's just that the that the connection is actually severed with if there's a power outage if you don't have the better backup. So you so even if it's connected to the grid, you're, you know, you're not generating power. So you don't have, you could run the school potentially if you could get battery backup if there's power loss. Yeah. If you have fixed batteries. You guys uh, always make fun of this. Yeah, you're okay. <laughs> Is there been a, a consensus on, uh, I know there's a couple of houses around where that design was like put into place. Uh, and has there been any sort of like going around? Because I know that everybody wants to live right next to the actually, there's no houses right there. There's a cemetery, oh, uh, that's directly across from the cemetery, yeah. It's okay, right. so, yeah, and this, this yeah. property right here, yes. this property right here. So, you okay. know, when you pull in the bus stop, yeah, that um, so, way so that neighborhood right across from the bus stop is no, it's all over here. And then oh, the walkabouts okay. over here. That's not good, yeah, because I know not everybody is standing up living next to. Like the infrastructure, regardless of what it is, yeah, it's across from the community garden. Okay, yeah, that used to be called Sherry's Prairie after one of the schools. Oh, really? Back when there was still a tree. Oh, <laughs> tree was dead. Once when it came down, it had leaves. The inside was dead, right? We could have all fit inside. So, you guys, uh, just Craig, I know it was an office because it's on the sound the other day. There was a call. Oh well, yeah, the bright guy in the sense, uh, right? We've been talking to them. Michigan Energy, Energy, Michigan Energy School. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're in the basic. Yeah. Yes, yes, we have been working with Wright for three years. We're probably going to go along. on this one here. They, I know they mentioned that this year they're working to get a bunch of school solar projects started and installed this year. So I was wondering if there's any possible link to saving some money. We've talked to them for three years. Yeah, so Bright um, is part of MESIC, and we've been in MESIC for our energy for a long time. Um, we have been talking with them, and they've been delaying, delaying, delaying. They did do a full RFP, but then when the IRA um, changes came into effect, they are now going to be reissuing a bid for the option of a purchase versus a lease. Their initial proposal they went out with was a lease, which is the proposal we got already um, from one of their bidders. They they went alone. They didn't want to touch ours because we wanted us we wanted to walk away and they didn't want to do all that sort of stuff. Um, but we did circle back with them once the IRA went through and they actually gave us, they're like, you're just a few weeks ahead of us. And I'm like, I'm not stopping. So um, we do have their technical specs that we're blending in for the purchase. Um, so we're going to be kind of their guinea pigs in going out for bid, and then they will continue there. But we're right in alignment with exactly what they're doing, um, as well as their um, the time and the money that they've already spent. We're gaining the benefit of doing that without having to like do a bid from from scratch. So we are part of all of that, um, but there's there wouldn't be a separate benefit. It would actually hold us back 
if we wanted to be a part of their bid because they would say it has to be this way and we don't like this. Way. This would give us the option to look at the needs for the purchase on our event project. But we do have, I mean, they gave us their, their templates. We're working on all this stuff today. What you're looking for is the it'll take us to that after you decide to start stretching and figure out what's going on. It's going to be long enough. Yeah, even if we don't have it. We just need process-wise, it is uh yeah, this is about the time we need to publicly talk about it. And to do a big RFP, it's it's a significant project. So it gives us a chance to really have a conversation. Submit the RFP and know that the results when they come back, we're going to be looking at a lease, lease options, and a purchase option. Can I just clarify what an RFP stands for? Request for proposals. Okay. Request for proposals. Okay. Request for proposals. 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 Request guidelines broadly to fully allow for creativity within the bid. Writing is more of a design bill. Similar to how we did um, the old type bill. We said we needed this much work to do this much work. And what are your best options? And we had to compare options. So this or is a goal that you can figure out. So that's how it's been written. It's really a great way. Craig's learn a lot. Always fun. Always learn. Exactly. But it is, uh, and we even got some more information today from the basic folks to help kind of craft it. We're uh, moving along. I assume that the responses are not obligated to a yes or no. We're going to take what we want and put together the final package that we would want to get out. That's that's kind of the question because I've been in a couple of these discussions where we say, well, this is how we did it, this is how we want to need to accept it. And I'd but I'd rather it be, well, this is what we've heard, and maybe we need to tweak our request a little bit to, so that everybody has a chance to bid on that thing. Um, and I don't know if that's allowable, but that would be great. This one is this is a really unique, this is really unique. We only have certain budget this work. And the IRA interpretations are fairly new. And then there's options for purchasing. We have one option if we use, um, like we have the coping system that it has to go into a capital budget. Or if we, we did plan in a bond to do some recovery, or do we, we could sell energy bonds to be able to pay off the savings. I mean, we have considerations that we'll have to make to see the action. But we won't have to accept. Yeah, the proposal is as is. We can we can go back and we go back and rebid it. Yeah, we can rebid it. So we things of creativity wide open coming in and then we can see what works best for us on it. And we just I guess steal ideas and put together the final package. And it's a little different than building a building, but we know what a building is. And we know what solar looks like, but it's the rules continue the technology continues to evolve quickly. And the rules as far as like just the IRA components that were the way we get the what was the percentage here? 20 30 30 percent savings, which was not even an option two months ago. And the interpretations now are we can get that savings if we even bought it ourselves, where it used to be had to have these investors and they got the savings. Then they sold back green credits for businesses that wanted to be green and they were actually your credits. Yeah. yeah, so we have uh, the rules continue to evolve. We're in this window where we know enough of the rules to know. And it's been, I mean, I think about when we started this three years ago, it is every time we think we have it, there's some other little nuance, but now we've seen it enough. We've talked to enough of the lease agreement bids and looked at enough numbers and designs, and we've worked with basic and their prices. Work and then work with their attorney that they actually spent the time educating on what to do. That we feel like we have. We know what we know. The next step is to do an RFP, and then we can sit down and do it. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
so for whatever it's worth, I won't be here next week, but um, that I feel very passionately about this 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 um, work and the initiative to go green. And I just think it's an imperative of our district and of other property owners throughout the throughout the state. You know, climate change is not going away, and whatever we can do to reduce our carbon footprint is, I think, a good plan. So thank you for pursuing this. And from an educational standpoint, our kids have been working with new technologies. We owe it to our kids to get new technologies in our schools or on our properties so they can be workers instead of just reading about it. I like to think about the thing is we're making it functional, we're making it educational, and we're making it environmental. I cannot not make things, and I really like that. Very creative. If we get the plan. We're going to get the plan. <laughs> Sharon and I have gotten to that point, Craig's here too. Uh, Oh, we're going. We're going to something. We have got too many hours in this. We already had a hundred something thousand dollars in checks that we have sitting in the bank that we're going to have to get money back. So I know you cited um, school districts in uh, Tucson, yeah. Arizona, and Arkansas. And it obviously, it was not lost on all of us that those are very sunny states. Um, but I do know that there is a closer district, Manchester, that does have a ground. Does ground up? Have you talked to them? Not much. They, they did theirs on. A, they, did, they did theirs on an energy bond. They? they did theirs enough a while ago that it's a different project. It's, well, I just wondered if like what their results are. If they're having like, I mean, it's there's some big ones. St. John's got a big one. Um, there's a couple other big projects that when I talked to the superintendents, Home and Elsie's doing a big one. They've seen some save, significant savings. Yeah. At least what they projected. But if you look around, obviously this is a big deal. It doesn't have to be the school. It's becoming a major product. Garson all around. You gotta believe it. in some sense we wouldn't see the farms all around the school. Well, I just want to point out that even though we gave sunny states as an example, we do have local districts um, that are having success in Michigan. I just wondered if you did shut those. Oh, it's sunny state. Well, I, <laughs> sure. we would have, I don't know how they ever get it. But other government regulations, savings and stuff, really doesn't matter whether you're a school or a business or a residence. No, but the bigger you do, the more economies of scale you should expect. And one of the hesitations to do the back when we first started was we had to figure out how to get the back state. We're not that. And then we had to navigate like on bond for tax exempt bond purchase property. If you're leasing something that a private company is making money, I mean, there's more options. So it's really nice that this IRN. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's confusing, but it's easier because there's something goofy with the 20 and the 30. I forget what you if, if we were to use our tax exempt bonds to pay for it, we don't get as much of a credit as we do if we don't use tax exempt bonds. And then there's if you source it like with US parks and if you use prevailing wage, like there's all these different competing things, but we just need to get, here's the proposal, here's how much it's gonna cost. Then we can run all those numbers with actually Baker Tilly will do all that for us. And then we'll look at the lease option and then we'll have something to compare. It's just this shifting, moving thing that we just can't even run any any analysis on until we get proposals that say, here's what we would do. And here's how much it's done. And we've been told by the lease companies if we do it ourselves. Just one question. Sure. Yeah. Um, when you lease, the, uh, like who's doing the maintenance? Even if we purchase, Going to want to do a maintenance contract with the summer company? Okay. Does that include like on the grass around the world? Three inches of sheet. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, we look for some cheap burgers, so. though. Maybe club at the high school. Maybe I don't think we're trying to pay for it. It's going to be the but just that you did for cheap, so it's going to be a nice Plus, 
we're elected. Yes. Solar Park All right. <laughs> yeah, I think we got off the rails. Is there any other discussion to aid to Solar Park All right. So we look forward to our theme next week. Okay. Um, all right. We will move on to our second opportunity for public participation. Same rules as the first time. Does anyone want to? No one? Okay. Do I want to play twice? All right. Um, we will move on to board comments. I have a quick update about the legislative breakfast that was this morning with the WASD. Um, it was supposed to be in person, but because of all the power outages everywhere, and I believe also. The ISD was out. Yeah. It's still okay, I was going to say, because it looked like they had some power to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it did move to Zoom, uh, but I think a lot of the legislators were actually in person there. Um, so just real briefly, uh, points for your calendar. March 9th, the same night that we have the district talk, there is going to be a advocacy like screen with them. I have heard to send an email out for now, but I'm assuming with the power issues that that can get out. So watch your emails for that. All board members will be invited to that. Um, also, the next legislative breakfast is going to be March 20th, which is in like three weeks. Um, and it's from 7 30 to 9 on Monday morning. And generally today, um, we were in breakout groups for a little bit, talking with other districts about sort of what issues we wanted to um, bring up. We talked to the legislators themselves, let them introduce themselves. We have a number of new ones to touch our current system. Um, we provided some background. Dr. Tempest is integral in some of these. Um, uh, areas, um, just talking about uh, some of the issues that might come before them and sharing um, just anecdotes and reasons why they might want to get more information from the people sort of on the ground in the school system. So, and then finally, we talked about the budget very uh, much more specifically. Um, but there will be another one in like three weeks. So, if you want to come for that on your calendar, and as I say, watch for your email about the we did have Senator Shinkley. She was at high school today. Um, I went there with her. She was very good. They grow pretty good. She was great. <laughs> there was a lot about process. It was really fast. That's the same issue with both of these three districts. I would rather um, school that we're going to hold for and other four. We'll have the same issue because it's trying to say that we're trying to use it.